Hello, my name is Maria Moon, and I'm a senior UX designer at Waymo. Thanks for joining today. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to build trust with your users. Before I begin, I thought I'd take a moment to tell you a little about myself and what I do. For the last three years, I've been at Waymo, where our pursuit is to make fully autonomous technology available to people and pave the way forward in mobility. Now, if you had asked me when I had graduated from design school, if I had imagined myself working with transportation or cars, it was the furthest thing from my mind. Now, looking back, while I didn't have transportation on my radar, there has been a common thread running throughout my career from the start, which has been an intense interest in applying the foundations of design towards new domains. These passions have paved the way for some unique and unexpected opportunities. During my early years as a creative with Samsung Design America, my focus was designing user experiences for home products for the kitchen, laundry, and living room. I quickly learned about the challenge of working across research, industrial design, and engineering teams to create experiences that click for both global and regional markets. After five years, I joined the Google Analytics team with a focus on developing the very first app analytic platform for Firebase, an app development tool. I led building the interface that would give developers an understanding of how users engage with their apps, from giving them an overview on the latest active user stats to visualizing app activity that is happening in the world right now. In my time at Google, I deepened my understanding of how user research might inform, shape, and set products up for success. Today, I'm able to bring my experiences of working with hardware and software to craft the Waymo experience, where we focus on immersive moments that you might have while riding in our Waymo-driven cars. What I'd like to share with you today are the methodologies I've learned along the way, how they've shaped my own practice of experience design at Waymo, and in particular, what it means when working with product managers. To start, I thought I'd give you a brief background on Waymo to give you an idea of the product space in general before going into how design works with product development and management. As some of you may know, Waymo started out as Google's self-driving car project. Since 2009, our vehicles have spent the equivalent of over a thousand years driving on the road. When we started out, fully autonomous cars seemed like science fiction or something you'd only be able to see in movies. Since then, we've moved away from building prototype vehicles and we're fully focused on developing the Waymo driver, the hardware and software that enables vehicles to drive themselves. At Waymo, we describe this approach as building the world's most experienced driver. We're building this driver in order to make it safe and easy for people and things to get to where they are going, which is our core mission here at Waymo. You can imagine there are various aspects of product management that range from consumer-facing services to logistics and operations. To fulfill this mission, at Waymo, our UX team is deeply integrated with the product team. Our UX team consists of both quantitative and qualitative researchers and designers. Our team works to understand the needs of our users, ensure that feedback from our users directly inform what we make, and we design the end-to-end -end user experience. As a designer and a thought partner, my contributions are to find ways to connect and build user-centered experiences for products. You're probably wondering, what does that actually look like? How does this translate into the everyday and building an experience into a product? And how does design fit into all of this? Let's start by describing design, specifically experience design. There are many disciplines of design, as well as schools of thoughts, just as there are many specialties of product management. But foundational to design is the intention to be received. In other words, design is about the user. It's the marriage of form and function for a purpose to be understood, be it an app, notification, or purchase flow. As UX designers, our talent is to apply our knowledge of visual communications, cultural biases and trends with the practical needs of delivering products that delight users. These things together create a sense of cohesion that ultimately builds trust and maximizes value for our users. Trying to identify and understand product opportunities is something that design research is made for. Design research is commonly known for serving the purpose of validation, but that's only the tip of what design researchers and really good ones seek to accomplish. 
Design researchers can help to identify product opportunities using user-centered methodologies. But in the end, really good researchers are able to uncover insights through observation that may surface attitudes, behavioral preferences, and user pain points that might point to a value you may have hypothesized about or just haven't thought of yet. Now, as you develop a product idea, there are questions that naturally might surface. So for example, what do users expect? Do users even see this as a problem? Or users say that they need this feature, but th do they need it or want it enough to be willing to pay more for it? And will it move the needle? Those very questions are what's great to work on with a researcher so that any work done can help answer those very questions or at the very least point you towards what you might need to do next. Just to speak to my own experiences at Waymo, what's super integral to our process has been a very tight and early integration with the product team, especially with our product managers. Collectively, we seek to focus our inquiries and gain better understanding of the role and value Waymo might have in people's lives. So how early are we talking about? Very early. Here's an example. Back in 2012, when we started testing our Lexus self-driving prototypes with Googlers, we uncovered a key insight. At the time, our capabilities were along the lines of a lane assist feature, which still requires people to take over and engage with the system at any moment. What we learned was very concerning. We saw that users almost immediately trusted the technology too much. Let's take a look at some clips from our user research of these employees commuting to and from work. So what pushed us over the line was that last final clip. The driver was so comfortable that he fell asleep. And if you'll notice, this is all happening on the freeway. This was a critical insight and it informed everything we've done since then. From that point on, we committed to full L4 autonomy where the car can independently operate itself without human intervention. So what is L4 exactly? The Society of Automotive Engineers has a scale to distinguish this. Here's a crash course on the different levels of autonomous technology. With levels one through three, there needs to still be a human driver. None of these systems are fully autonomous. Rather, they are driver assist systems, things like lane assistance, adaptive cruise control, etc. But with level four, that's where things get interesting. It means an empty car can come and pick you up and you can travel door to door while sitting in the back seat. Unlike other technologies that may ask you to take over during your ride, no one is required to sit at the wheel. At Waymo, our entire focus is on level four. We believe that this is the safest approach to rolling this technology out to the public with today's capabilities. The insights gained through design research is how your ideas can be informed from real users and data. Experience design can then take those insights and can help define your final product. So when does working with a designer come in? There are different ways to involve design. A common way is to involve design after product requirements are set, functionality and feasibility have been assessed, and really it's just a matter of aesthetics with whatever is implemented. But the best way to involve design is actually from earlier on, which is what we do here at Waymo. What design brings earlier to the table is a perspective of how a user might interface with your product idea or service even when ideas are still pretty rough. As a partner, you'll find a springboard for fresh ideas and inspiration that can help shape product requirements and uncover important challenges before time and resources are committed. As user experience designers, we get at the core of how we might give form to an idea and achieve the end goal of the experience. We specialize in putting ourselves in the shoes of our users, anticipating and addressing interaction problems and needs, establishing experience outcomes and principles, 
and developing clear solutions that help guide how a user might interact with a feature, what it might look and feel like as a product. And it may be messy and ambiguous or might even seem too early at times, but the benefit of working with design is that it accelerates the process to rough out ideas, evaluate and evolve them, and experience it firsthand, all before heavy engineering investment and efforts are made. I mentioned experience outcomes and UX principles and wanted to circle back on it because it's an important step in our process at Waymo. You may be familiar with the term, but for those of you who might not be, experience outcomes outline what we want to achieve experientially for a given moment or interaction. For instance, here are some examples of experience outcomes we defined in our early days. As a passenger in our autonomous cars, it's clear to me that the car sees everything that's important, even things I wouldn't notice. I can get a sense of what the car is doing now and what it's about to do. When I feel something unexpected, I can glance at the in-car screen and get a sense of what's going on. Focusing on the experience outcomes such as these ensured open-endedness on how a solution might evolve while keeping us anchored on the ultimate goal of our user's experience. Setting experience principles helped to establish guidelines for what experiences should be centered around. For instance, it became clear early on that one of the biggest challenges with autonomous vehicles is that there's no one present in the driver's seat. This can be both exciting and even scary for some. Let's listen to some of our early riders describe their experiences in their own words. There was one way more rides. I believe it was like a Saturday or Sunday morning. We were, I think we were going to a friend's house. And we drove by, a, this is a residential neighborhood. There was with kids, families around. You know, I wasn't paying too much attention. The car, I noticed it stopped all of a sudden. I was like, why? A child had run out from be between some cars onto the road. And the car noticed it and stopped faster than I could have ever reacted. What's surprising is the way that the car sees everything, everything around you. It's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. So. <laughs> I don't have to have teenagers out driving around in a $50,000 piece of equipment that I have to insure and worry about, and worry about that and worry about them. At no point have I felt unsafe in the car or uncertain. I had never wanted to own a car, and it, but I grew up in a place where I was required to have one. It was a required skill for survival. Now I get to live in the world where it's not required. I don't have to put myself at risk. I don't have to put other people at risk. So after work, a couple minutes before I leave, I'll usually call my Waymo. I can see exactly when Waymo's going to be coming. I can see the map where they are, so I know when to walk outside and when I'll be good. It was just to see the car doing what it needed to do with no one at the helm. It's just it felt like my, my, my childhood dreams are starting to come true. They're excited about our tech, but they also have questions along the way. And as with anything new, there can be some apprehension when hopping into a fully autonomous car. I think back to my own first ride and the questions that I had. I had questions like, what will it be like? Um, what can the car really see? Um, how does it think? How does it know what to do? And how will I know where it's going? We know that most people are experiencing autonomous technology and learning how it works for the very first time when they get into one of our cars. And we recognize that there's a genuine need to build trust and give assurance to riders. So we've developed a set of principles based on what we've learned early from our early riders to help guide our work and anchor the whole team back to what we're trying to achieve. This leads to our first experience principle of establishing trust. We want people to feel comfortable and confident during every step of the ride. And since we've built almost every part of the user journey from scratch, we've had the opportunity to ensure that our design principles are reflected throughout. We build trust in several ways. First, through transparency. We communicate with the rider throughout their journey through several different touch points. After all, many of them are making a shift from being drivers to being passive riders. We want them to know exactly what to expect and what will happen along the way. They should be notified and educated without being overwhelmed by information. Secondly, we build trust by leaning into our unique value, freedom. Freedom from the stress of driving or worrying about safety on the road. Freedom to get where you want to go. And freedom in the form of time back, to use however you would like. When people ride with Waymo, we want to ensure that what we're doing with the product experience embraces this principle. 
which guides our choice on what features or experiences to build. And finally, we build trust through consistency. In our user experience, riders interact with Waymo across different touch points, from our app to our fully autonomous cars to even our rider support agents. So we strive to create a cohesive journey so that at each point, it feels like one connected experience with our brand. Aligning on principles and experience outcomes before getting into solutions can be a powerful guide to decision making or how you anchor the value of a feature or idea. Let's walk through the Waymo experience now. It starts right on your phone. The Waymo app makes it easy to get to where you're going in a fully autonomous car. Just tell us where you're headed, and then we'll automatically select the safest spot to pick you up and drop you off. When the car arrives and you hop in, one of the first thing you'll notice is our passenger screen. It welcomes our riders and assures them that they're in the right place and we know where they want to go. We know from our user research that reassuring riders that they're in the right car and we know where they're going is important. You can also hear the music that's playing right now, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute. I think it helps to understand how we think about this interface to get a feel for the type of design problems we focus on day to day. When you're a passenger in a car driven by a human, there's a lot of communication that happens between you and the driver. It can be pretty direct, like asking, uh, which route are you gonna take? Or why aren't you moving, the light is green. It could also be indirect. A driver watching a person on a crosswalk may indicate they're waiting for pedestrians. Repositioned hand on the wheels could suggest that they're about to make a left turn. In fact, studies show that body language can account for more than half of all communications. So from a very early point, we knew we'd need some method of communication in our vehicles to build that trust, so riders could feel safe, secure, informed, and at ease during their ride. Early on, a lot of our riders asked, what is a car doing and what can our cars actually see? Well, there's a ton our cars could communicate. Some of you have probably seen an image like this one. It's what our engineers use for development, but this raw output is just too dense and demands too much attention for riders who just want to get from point A to B. So we spend a lot of time curating exactly what we show on our passenger screen. We want our riders to have a sense of just how much our vehicles can see and understand without overwhelming them. The in-car screens have to work to assure a rider taking their very first trip and not be overwhelming or annoying to those taking their hundredth. Here's what a paired back version of our UI looks like. Let's start with the basics. Here we're showing the road and crosswalks, the car's trajectory, which appears as a green path, and nearby vehicles, which are simple shapes. We use the actual laser points to render pedestrians and cyclists because we've gotten feedback that our riders actually appreciate seeing their arms and legs moving, and essentially that the car recognizes that they're people. You'll also notice that we light up the active crosswalks, the ones in front of us that have pedestrians in them, to give them a sense of what we're yielding to. In addition to the 3D scene, where we see what the car sees, we also use a status layer to be more direct in our communication. This is very similar to the indirect communication between a driver and a passenger. In this layer, we communicate things like traffic light signals, stop signs, speed limits, and special zones like school zones. It also allows us to directly communicate what the car is doing or thinking. So for instance, a rider might ask, why is the car stopping? We will use the lower portion of the UI to provide messages to let the rider know exactly why the car is stopped. So I've been voicing over each of these images to help explain things, but what if you were riding alone? To complete the experience, we came to understand, again through research and user input, the need for good sound design, especially at important moments. We don't use sound needlessly. We are very select for when and how we use sound, so users can also trust that when they do hear something, that there's purpose and meaning. This framework describes how. We use sound and voice to build on what we're doing in our visual UI. For example, we know users are more likely to look at the screen when we use sound, so we use it for time-sensitive notifications, reinforce indicators, and sonify our brand and tone. Another modality we use is voice. Voice comes in handy when we know writers might be focused on something else, Voice allows us to personalize messages and convey things that are easier to hear versus see. After you press the Start Ride button, you'll hear something like this. Heading to Desert Breeze Park. 
We know you might be focused on other things, so we use a sound to indicate your ride's about to start and voice to reassure you that we're heading to your destination. Low priority notifications. We have a tone that indicates a status update, confirming things like if you changed your destination in the Waymo app or that you're about to arrive. It sounds something like this. Destination updated to Chandler Sunset Library. From research insights to experience outcomes and design principles, the examples you've seen today shaped the end product of how our users experience and engage with Waymo. And this is what it's like today. Daddy, that is nuts. It's pretty crazy. It's like there's a ghost, a ghost at the steering wheel. I kind of feel like royalty being paraded around in this thing. School zone. Look at these guys. Look it over. Are they? <laughs> no driver. No. What? This little Waymo thing is cruising. <laughs> Pretty sharp turn. He made it pretty smoothly. Thank you. Do I say thank you? We're here. We made it. And I didn't have to drive. As we conclude, I'll leave you with these three key takeaways. Involve your designers early. Think of your designer as your thought partner. As problem solvers, designers bring value to the table. We accelerate the process, we're your partners for ideation, and we can help anticipate and unlock ideas together. Be informed by leveraging research. Gain insights on meeting your users where they are. Understand attitudes, behaviors, and needs. And finally, work with your designers to align and establish experience outcomes and UX principles. Anchor your features and guide solutions to focus on achieving the desired outcomes. And that's what I have to share with you today. Again, thanks for joining and happy Thanksgiving.